I'm stood in, here in Laos, down at the Danes, and this area here is where all the nets were dried for the herring drifters. Look at Laos of today, it's very hard to imagine that in 1914 Lowestoft was a major fishing port. It had around 350 steam drifters, about a couple of 150 sailing trawlers. This whole area would be covered with nets. There was net stores all the way down. The bird's eye factory is today, that was the beach village. And fishing was very important to the British economy. During the First World War, Lowestoft was a major naval base. It was decided in 1910 that minesweepers and mines were going to be an important aspect in the next war. The sailing smacks and, and the steam drifters originally weren't used, but eventually steam drifters were used for patrol boats and net barriers. During 1915, German U-boats in the first unrestricted submarine warfare were sinking lowest of sailing smacks at quite a rate. And by August, they'd sunk 60 smacks from this port. So under pressure from fishermen and, and owners, Ellison, captain in charge of the naval base, he commissioned four smacks. They fitted them with a three pound gun and they also fitted them with a motor. And these things were used as decoy vessels to go in amongst the fishing fleet. But the most famous of all these skippers is obviously Tom Crisp, who was, who was killed in, a, in a, an engagement with U6, UC63. We're standing outside Lowestoft Maritime Museum, which is a good place to introduce my new book, Lowestoft Fishermen During the First World War. In 2010, I was at the National Archive in London doing some research on my family's history. While we were there, we came across statements made by skippers whose vessels had been sunk during the First World War. These statements were border trade documents and the skippers whose vessels were sunk by enemy action or vessels that were damaged signed them under oath. For the Royal Navy, the fishermen were able to provide vital intelligence uh, on my, new minefields or mines that had come adrift and were floating and there were going to be a danger to shipping. They also were able to give vital information on German submarines. Over the years, I collected loads of these statements and they told a story which is different to the, the narrative you usually get about the First World War. These fishermen went to sea and they were flying the Red Ensign. They were not Royal Naval, they were civilians and they were men and boys. When a smack was sunk, it was most often sunk by a bomb. What would happen, that the submarine would come up alongside the smack the crew would be told to abandon the smack and then the Germans would go across and put a bomb on board and then the crew were cast adrift in their little boat. But more times than not, there was conversation going on between the Germans and the crews of the smacks. So the crews, when they got back to shore, were able to tell naval intelligence quite a bit about what the submarine was like, how many, how many there was of the crew was on the submarine and information like that. Trawler owners paid into a scheme to provide insurance for the skipper and the mate. Under pressure from the mayor, Brooks, this eventually covered the third hand as well. But when you look at a lot of the steam drifters that sailed out of this port at that period, the crews had eight or nine people on them. So you had a load of men who had no insurance cover whatsoever. So they were reliant on their, the charity of others. If they survived an attack, they lost all their personal effects. So when they came ashore, they had to buy new gear to go back to sea. There are now six signs like this one here in key places around Lowestoft to remind us of the fishermen who died and fought in the First World War.